Oh yeah! Good morning! Good morning! It is Wednesday morning here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta and it is time to grab that cup of coffee, grab your Bibles and just kick back. It's time for the chat this morning. I'm so glad to be back with you this morning. We've had a rainy night overnight here in the Delta, but it looks like the sun is wanting to poke its way through the clouds for just a little while. I'm glad to see the sun come out because man, oh man, have we forevermore seen the rain. Woo, my goodness, it's rain. And I don't think that we're out of the woods yet, y'all. I think we're going to be seeing some, some more today. I know I just looked at the uh, weather radar just before I clicked the live switch. And we've still got some, uh, some floaters that's over in central Arkansas and down a little bit further south. It's kind of making their way to the northeast and that's going to smack us right in the middle of the face. I mean, and so I think that we are distinctly going to see some rain this afternoon. So if you've got to be out today, this afternoon for sure, you got to be careful because you could get yourself caught in a downpour, folks, and, and uh, you got to be careful. Make sure you get your umbrella, maybe a light jacket. You definitely want to be careful. Got to be careful. But man, oh man, it was raining. I know last night when I was on uh, was on our online Sunday school uh, with Dr. Jones last night, man, it was coming down while we were watching. I'm not, I'm not even lying. It was coming down. But... Uh, uh, it has rained all night. My grass is like, whew, and it's gone, whew. I mean, it is so tall. It is so thick, and it, it and I can't even get in it for the next two or three days because if you never know the busyness of a pastor's life until you watch him on Easter week. And there is just so much that goes on in the life of a pastor the week of Easter. I and mean, there's no time to even, even breathe, really, if you just want to know the truth. And so uh, this week is just nuts. And I'm not going to be able to get into my yard until after Sunday morning's service. So it will be well in, into the, uh, the, the late weekend, even if I get a chance to do that, possibly even Monday. And so, uh, man, oh, man, oh, man, it is just, it's going to be thick. It is so bad that the absolute dandelions are out here. It's like they're a parade in my yard, if you just want to know the truth. And they are just out here, and they're just waving at me. I've got my blinds open, and I'm looking outside, and they're just like, hey, hey, you can't do nothing about me. And so they're just out there waving at me this morning, and they're just, bless their little old gizzards, they're just going to have to stay out there because I cannot get to them. It is not going to happen. But I'm excited to know that I'm going to get to borrow a weed eater uh, for later on this weekend, uh, my, my, my main man, Norval Casey, is uh, letting me borrow his weed eater, and I am going to put the whoop on some of this stuff that's around my trees, that's around my house. I mean, I'm going to light it up this morning. I mean, I'm going to light it up. Folks, come on in here. Say good morning to me. I'm about to get everything shared here, and I want you to do the same thing. Right now, I want you to click that share button. Hit it. Hit that share button because that's what takes it out into your neck of the woods. We can talk to your friends. We can talk to your families, and we can tell them about Jesus. So come on in. Grab all that. Get your coffee. Now that I'm about able to settle down over here and see who all's in here. There's Judy Davis. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Judy. How you doing this morning, lady? There is Dr. Jones and Miss Pam. They are in the building this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Debbie Tacker. Good morning, Debbie Tacker. Glad you are here. Who else? Who else? Who else? Good morning, Brian Potter. Good morning, Ruth Hastings. Let me see here. Gary Gustin. Gary Gustin, due to weather, no drive through prayer. To Amen. Okay, that's good. You guys will be safe for that. Gary, so glad to see you. And uh, Miss Kim, because I have been missing you, I hope you guys are all right. I hope all is well. And there's Jesse. Good morning, Miss Jesse. Man, everybody's sneaking into the preacher's house this morning. So glad y'all are here. I hope your coffee is strong this morning. I will tell you right now that I am at the point to where it's not about the quality of the coffee. It's about the quantity of the coffee. And so if you see me, uh, if you see me running around with an IV bag of coffee plugged in, just mind your business. Okay. I mean, just mind your business because I got to get all the coffee in me. I can stand. So if you, I may be wheeling one of them things around. It's got a, it's got that coffee in that IV bag, and I'm just chugging it in because I got to get it. So just, just kind of keep walking. Just, just wave at me. And just keep on walking. Amen. Woo, amen. This coffee is good stuff. Mm. 
All right, folks, you know the deal. Every time you hit the like, the love, or the care button, it sends it kapow, sends it right on out. Uh, faster into the Facebook algorithms. Every time you hit the share button, it takes it out into your neck of the woods. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. Hey, we got a monumental week. It's going on this week. And so I just want to kind of bring you up to snuff as to what's going to go on. If you missed online Sunday school last night with Dr. Jones, you got to go back and watch this. Okay. I mean, I mean, you got to go back. It's just a couple of scrolls down past it. You got to go get this. Talking about worship. Uh, so do not miss that. That'll give you something to do this afternoon when you're just kicking around the house and you need the time to sit down and rest. Maybe you've been doing chores. Maybe you've been running around and you just need to sit back and catch your breath. Please, please, please go back and catch last night's Sunday school with uh, Brother Larry. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Tonight. Woo! Woo! Tonight. 6.30. 6.30 is our Wednesday Night Live Bible study. We are deep, deep, deep into Galatians chapter 5. And tonight we're going to be talking about the acts of the sinful nature. You do not want to miss this. This is tonight at 6.30. Make sure you you, you, you send your, your, your text and your phone calls and say you need to be with us online as we talk about the acts of the sinful nature. And Paul is warning those Galatian churches is exactly what's going to go on. So you do not want to miss this. Uh, later on this afternoon, uh, I've, I've got some things going on at the church for a little while. And later on this afternoon, uh, here is what I want you to do. Always be refreshing this page because I'm doing Holy Week services, moments, whatever word you want to use, every afternoon this week as we look at the events of Jesus on the last week that he was on this earth. We've already done Monday and Tuesday, and we are right back into this is Wednesday. Friday's coming. Hang with me on Holy Week. If you can't be with me, like I said, I, my schedule is so whack right now, I can't give you a time, but it will be in the afternoons. And if you happen to miss it, please make sure that you spend 15, 20 minutes later on tonight and you catch that because you want to be in the K-N-O-W as to what was going on in the week of Jesus. It makes everything on that Friday come together. It is the pieces of the puzzle that we sometimes miss, and you do not want to miss. Just like Mary Witt, Sunday's coming, but we're on our way to Friday. And we got to see exactly what's going on. So that's every afternoon this week, okay? Every afternoon is our Holy Week time, Holy Week moments. The chat's going to roll on for the rest of the week. Everything is all good. We have got rehearsal tomorrow night. If you're part of our Easter praise uh, team, uh, we are going to rehearse tomorrow night at 6, 6 o'clock. That is all tomorrow night. And then uh, uh, we are definitely looking forward to, to rehearsal. I'm just going to tell you uh, real quick that Sunday, you do not want to be uh, missing Sunday. I'm telling you right now, Sunday is going to be incredible. We want you to make plans to be with us Sunday morning on campus if you possibly and physically can. It is going to be a powerful day. We're going to start things out with a baptism, and to say that that excites your preacher is an understatement of biblical proportion. So I'm so ready. Good morning, Miss Annie Norma, and so glad that you are here. Thank you for sneaking in. But please make plans for Sunday at 1030. And if you can't make it, please, please, please make sure that you are right here online as we broadcast. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a powerful day, and I'm so excited to see what God has planned. So all of this is rolling on, and then on Saturday, Saturday, one o'clock, there on the Ridgewood campus, it is time for our Easter egg hunt, shindig, that's all going to go on. It is for kids of all ages. We want you to help us get the word out. Tell all your kids, your neighbor's kids, your kids' kids, all that good stuff, and come on out. It starts at 1 o'clock. Lots of fun games. There's supposed to be a bounce house, all kinds of fun. 1 o'clock, 1 till 3, uh, there on the Ridgewood campus. So come on in and be a part of that. We would love to have you. But Sunday, Sunday. That's the day. You do not want to miss 
Sunday. Man, it's good to be back with you. Thank you for uh, understanding yesterday we were able to uh, uh, go to the funeral of uh, our sweet brother JD as he was laid to rest yesterday and uh, said goodbye to him. And uh, of course, the family was there. A lot of our church family was there. But uh, we are back rocking and rolling today. Today, our last Bible verse of the month, as we have been looking at increasing our faith, is coming to us this morning out of 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. So if you want to flick on over there, I'll give you a couple of chances to do that. I hope you've enjoyed our March Bible verses uh, each, each day as we've looked at increasing our faith. Tomorrow starts a brand new list. Brand new list. April, we're going to be talking about overcoming anxiety. Overcoming anxiety. If you would like one of these, you can pick this up on our church campus. Uh, they are ready. And uh, Gloria has got some of those printed out for us. And you can snag one of those. Uh, and I will be going over those each morning, Monday through Friday here on the chat. All right, First Peter chapter 1. It's actually verse 7, but I want to go back and I want to pick up verse 6. So we're going to read 6 and 7 as we're talking about increasing our faith. Simon writes this. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, grieved, uh, distressed, whatever word you want, you want to use here, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus. Oh my word, what a way to end our month as we focus on increasing our faith. That your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes. That's your faith, folks. That's my faith. Much more precious than gold that perishes. Though it is tested. And folks, our faith is tested every day. Amen? Every day. And though it is tested by fire, may be found. May our faith be found to what? Praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And all God's people this morning said, Amen and Amen. Good stuff today as we continue in our Increase My Faith. As we wrap it up, this is it. And so I hope that you have used that. I would suggest that you keep your chart, and that way you can go back to it from time to time, and you can look at those scriptures as God directs you. Folks, we're headed back to 1 Samuel chapter 17. That's our text, and I want you to get on back over there. We're going to pick up yesterday's verses as well. So 1 Samuel chapter 17, we're actually going to look at yesterday's verses, which is 26 and 27, and then uh, we're going to roll on in through verse 30 this morning. So go ahead and get your Bibles on over there. I'll give you a couple chances to get over there. Uh, that'll give me a chance to uh, swig down some more of this deep, dark French roast. Mm. Mm. Um, go, ahead, go ahead and say it with me. Mm. Do it a little bit loud. Mm. You see, that's the nature of a good cup of coffee. Is it just It, it, it just goes all the way to the to to the marrow of the bone, to the core of the soul. Now that's what I'm talking about. I mean, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Just let's just do it again. Ready? Mm. Mm. Man, oh man, what a way to begin our day with coffee, and more importantly, with Jesus. Man, oh man. All right, here we go. First Samuel chapter seventeen. You ready? First chapter. Or first Samuel chapter 17. Now y'all remember where we were on Monday. Okay? Man, it's a good story, amen. It's a good story. Here's the thing. What a story. Facts. Everything we read about here is facts. 100 percent locked and loaded truth. It took place. We cannot ever forget this. This is not a fable. This is not something that you pass down from generation to generation as folklore. This is reality. The reality was the Philistines wanted to destroy Israel. Fact, Israel wanted to destroy the Philistines. Fact. 
the Philistines had a beast of a man that was their champion. He had never lost a battle. And he wasn't scared of nothing. This dude stood nine feet, nine inches tall. A mountain of a man. His coat of mail, his breastplate, weighed 125 pounds. The head of his spear on a weaver's beam pole weighed 16 pounds. He had bronze coverings on his legs. He had a bronze helmet. God only knows the size of his sword. He had his own shield bearer that went in front of him that carried a shield big enough to protect the bearer himself and Goliath. And he had killed many men. Fact. He was taunting the Israelites like nobody's ever seen before. This is the epitome of a bully. Scripture says that he called out to them for 40 days and 40 nights, morning and night. You're worthless. You're cowards. Send me one man. To fight me. Not the battle of the armies, but me. Fight me. Send me your absolute best. And if he kills me, we will serve you. But if I kill him, y'all will serve others. Send me one man. And all the while, little David was in and out of the, the, the battle. And he would go to King Saul and he'd play the harp for King Saul while Saul was dealing with that distressing spirit that God had sent. And then back and forth, back to Bethlehem to take care of his father's sheep. And now it was time for him to go back to the battlefront. But this time, Dad said, I need you to take some groceries to your brother's. David's oldest brothers, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shema, were on the front lines of battle. And these were the best of the best of the house of Jesse. These were the ones that everybody thought would be the one that Samuel himself would anoint for king. But God said, mm, that's not it. And so off he goes, and he goes up to the battlefront. And while he's there, it's one of those times that this big, massive beast comes in. And he's yelling and yelling and yelling, taunting and taunting the Israelites. Taunting, send me one man. Send me one man. And David's like, what in the world is going on? And so rumor is going on through the men that, well, whoever it is that goes out and not only fights the guy, but wins, look here what he gets. And I'm going to go back up to verse 25. This is where we left on Friday or on Monday, rather. He said, the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches. He will also give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. And that's where we left off. It's the battlefront. Goliath is on one side, David and the other men of Israel, by the thousands, are there. But no one dares to face Goliath. They're horrified. They're trembling in their boots. Let's pick it up now at verse 26. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? In other words, what, what, what is it y'all are saying? What, what, what is it? I'm, I'm hearing something going up and down the ranks. What, what is it? Now then, look at what David says. He said, For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Who is this guy, notice how he identifies him, this uncircumcised Philistine, okay? This is David's way. He is identifying him. This is a Gentile. 
He is uncircumcised. And if you've been following us along on Wednesday night, you understand what the, 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 the difference of circumcision and uncircumcision was to the Jews when it, it, it relates to salvation. And so he is identifying him as a man who does not follow God. This is a man whose God is not Yahweh. He is an uncircumcised. He is, he is like, like, like filthy rags because he does not know God. He is not like me. He does not serve my Lord and Savior. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Who do you think you are standing up against the army of God? This is a boy. Now, do you talk about a boy that's been raised right? This boy's been raised right. Verse 27. And the people answered him. In other words, David's asked this question. What, what is it y'all are saying? And the people answered him in this manner saying, well, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. In other words, what you've been hearing is right. Okay, He's going to get all kinds of money. He's going to get the king's daughter. And he, uh, the, the man's dad's going to get all of his taxes taken off. Okay, so that, that is what you're going to get. So he's just been verified as to exactly what's going to go on. But now verse 28 is where it gets interesting. Look at verse 28. Now Eliab, this is the oldest brother. This is also the first one that Jesse put in front of Samuel, the one that Samuel thought was the one that was good looking, that was built, that was monumental, that looked like a king. Okay. Now, Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. In other words, he's, he's listening to little brother, baby brother down here. And when he spoke to his men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. In other words, he's getting ticked off now at David. <laughs> and he said, why did you come down here? Big brother is mad at David. Why? Because little brother is making big brother look kind of dumb. And he's revealing the, the, the cowardness, if you will, of the Israeli army. And so Big Brother's like, why did you do this? Can I ask you a question? For those of you who have, have older siblings, you ever have a sibling do that to you? Maybe you've done it to a younger sibling. They've done something and it just ticked you off. You're like, what do you think you're doing? You need to sit yourself down. You need to calm down. You ever done that to a sibling? Have you ever seen someone else do it to their sibling? It's exactly what's rolling on here. Okay? It's exactly what's rolling on here. Eliab said, why did you come down here? And, and, and he continues on. And, and just with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? In other words, you need to haul your hiney back to the hills and you need to be taking care of them sheep. Who did you leave them with in the first place? Oh, he's mad. Here's little David. In all honesty, probably looking up at Big Brother like, what are you so mad about? Now look at Eliab. I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. In other words, you just come down here to see what it was all about. You just, uh, you, you, you ever heard the term rubbernecking? You know, ever something going on, you got a car accident going on or something's on fire or something, and you got to go just look at it? Or you got to drive by and everybody's neck is hanging out the window when you got to see something on the road? Y'all know what I'm talking about. We always call it, that's rubbernecking. That's exactly what's going on here. In other words, little brother, you just come down here just to see what all the shenanigans are all about and what all the hoodoo is going on. You need to go home. You need to go home right now and you need to go tend to the sheep and you need to leave the fight to the big boys. You can just hear the tone in your lives' voice. Verse 29. And David said, well, what have I done now? Okay, this tells me that this has been an ongoing thing for years. What have I done now? Now. So I would be willing to bet that there was always something going on in the house of Jesse that David got in trouble for. Sounds familiar when there's multiple kids involved, right? 
You've seen it. You've heard it. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. I mean, we're just, uh, we're not playing games here. I know what you're doing, little brother. I know. The little brother says, what have I done? Is there not a cause? In other words, is this crazy fool that's on the other side of this valley not a cause to be riled up about? Verse 30. Then he turned from him. In other words, this is David turning from Eliab. And it's almost like I, I've heard enough. Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. Remember, he's got three older brothers there, okay? Eliab, Abinadab, and Shema. He turned from the from an, he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. In other words, everywhere he turned, he was shut down. He was made to feel like he couldn't do anything. Why are you here? You need to go home. You can't do any good here. Okay? That's the thrust of this entire passage of Scripture. And so I have to ask us this morning, have you ever felt like somebody was telling you you can't do nothing? You need to go home? You need to get out of here and let the big boys do this? Maybe it's happened at home. Maybe it's happened at work. Maybe it's happened at school. Maybe it's happened at church. I want to tell you something. God is looking for those of us that have a heart for him that is ready to go to work. We have to make ourselves available for him to use and then to be obedient when he calls us. Amen. 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 Hit that heart button right now. You understand that. Hit that heart button because I know you know what I'm talking about. David had a heart for God. And little did he know when he left home that morning going to the battlefront that he was going to encounter this. He didn't go up there looking for, for the, this, this beast of a man that's on the other side of that hill. He didn't go up there looking for that. He went up there to take food to the brothers because remember, dad told him, I need you to go, go talk to your brothers, find out how they're doing, and you need to come back and report to me. Okay. And that was his job. And so he's up there doing what his daddy told him to do. And then all of a sudden, this crazy nut job on the other side over there stands up and he does his morning bellering that's going out. And David's like, well, who, who, who in the name of God does he think he is, this uncircumcised Philistine? Who does he think he is to defy the armies of God? And all it did, there's a, can, can you feel the jealousy coming from those older brothers? Can you feel the envy? It's almost like, I wish you'd go home because I need to look like you right now but I can't because I'm horrified. Hear what I'm saying this morning. With God, all things are possible. Say it out loud. With God, all things are possible. We have to have a heart for God. We have to make ourselves available for God to use. And then we'll have to be obedient when he calls. David is about to do just that. Folks, thank you so much for joining me this morning here on our coffee chat. It has been a great, great morning. I want to thank you today. If you do happen to get out, just as a real, real quick reminder, there are probably going to be storms that, uh, that uh, are coming in and you want to be very careful you do not want to get caught out in it, so make sure you've got an umbrella, maybe a light jacket, you know, something like that. Um, 
I believe the ladies are headed to the church here in the next little bit. They're going to wrap up our Easter egg stuffing that's going to go on. So that's all going to be taking place. Remember tonight, 6.30, headed into Galatians, talking about the acts of the sinful nature. And then uh, remember to keep refreshing the page and hang out with me this afternoon as we continue to look at the events. It's time for me to go. I love you guys so very much. If you need anything, reach out to me. I love you guys so very much.